All right, let's get into this discussion now. So 66% of Africans say they prefer democracy to any other system of government. That's according to the latest Democracy Trends uh, in Africa report by Africa Barometer, or Afrobarometer rather. It shows that um, although Africans prefer democracy, they're not completely satisfied due to poor socioeconomic and political interference, political performance rather. Uh, let's unpack these findings with the Director of Surveys at Afrobarometer, Dr. Bonnie Dulani. Dr. Dulani, a good morning to you. Thank you so, so much for joining us. You know, I think this is such an important discussion because so often um, you hear people say every once in a while that, oh, but democracy is so un-African. It's not an African way of leadership. Um, and you've actually went to really get those answers, right? And you've spoken to people from... You've run the survey in a few other countries. Let's talk first about what it was that you were looking at and what, uh, what led you to running the survey. Thank you for having me. Indeed, I think the Afrobarometer has actually been running these surveys uh, since 1999. And at the moment, we are covering uh, up to 40 countries uh, uh, in Africa. And I think our interest has been to uh, get the voices of ordinary African citizens uh, over issues that affect them, including, I think, these questions on democracy uh, and governance. So I think this is, uh, as I'll call it, a view uh, from below in, uh, on issues of governance. Yeah. So 40 countries included. Well, I think I counted about 39 countries included in the survey, 54 face-to-face -face interviews. And I'm keen to hear uh, what some of the key findings were from a surface level, right? So um, on average across 39 countries, support for democracy remains robust. What does that look like? Indeed, I think as you rightly point out, when we've surveyed the citizens on the continent uh, on their preference for democracy over other forms of government, two in every three uh, people that we've spoken to tell us that democracy is always preferable to other forms of government. Of course, over a 10-year period, we find that this has declined, I think, over time by about six percentage points. But it, uh, I think when you compare African citizens to other citizens across the world where these surveys are also run, we, you know, Africans tend to be the most committed uh, to democracy and also uh, very understanding of what democracy really means uh, for them and for their countries. Yeah, and yet um, fewer than half of Africans think that their countries are mostly or completely democratic. What is it, 37% saying they're satisfied with the way that democracy works in their countries. Very, very interesting. But I, I want to look at some of the questions that you've asked because you, you essentially asked some of the respondents in these 39 countries um, how they feel about one-man rule, about one-party rule, how they feel about military rule, and if they prefer democracy over any kind of government. I'm really keen to get... Um, that comparison when you do have countries that really do have this kind of leadership in place? Yeah, so I think, you know, the way we look at this issue is what we call demand, whether looking at whether citizens want democracy, and some of the questions are the ones that you've highlighted. Uh, do they want democracy? Do they reject authoritarian forms of government like military rule, one-party rule, military rule? And we find that overall, you know, rejection of these other authoritarian forms of government is pretty strong uh, in, in, in the high 80s for rejection of one-party rule as well as one-man rule. For military rule, on the other hand, we find that rejection rates are still also quite high. 66% to say they don't want military rule. And this goes contrary to popular belief that when people see celebrations on the streets in Ouagadougou, in countries like uh, Niger, uh, Guinea, Gabon, that have recently experienced military coup, this does not symbolize a majority view. Mm. However, that said, we've also seen that the rejection of military rule in particular has declined over time. Uh, over a 10-year period, rejection of military rule has actually gone down by 11 percentage points. And some of the countries uh, where military rule rejection has gone down the most include, not surprisingly, some of the countries that we've seen embrace military rule like Mali, Burkina Faso, but also some other countries that we should be concerned with, uh, like uh, Cote d'Ivoire, for example, where more citizens now tend to be more accepting of military rule. Why would On the that... Other hand, yeah, sorry, uh, uh, Dr. Dulani, because that's an interesting point. 
Why would more African citizens be accepting of military rule in your view? I think we also see that, you know, as the democracies, you know, as performance with the democracies, you know, is, has been declining, especially in terms of the ability of democratic governments to deliver on economic goods. Uh, more citizens are now looking at military rule. But more importantly, I think as people get disillusioned with the performance of democratic governments in terms of corruption, in terms of economic mismanagement, uh, in terms of leadership impunity, people are now looking at the military as an alternative, not necessarily to come in and govern, but to clean up, I think, the, the, the mess that has been created by democratic government. So overall, when we ask you know, citizens if the military should sometimes I mean, we find that 53% of citizens across the continent tell us that, yes, the military should come in when democratic governments have failed so that they can clear up and then depart from the scene. Sure, that is very, very interesting. And, and um, you know, it's 53, it's above half of people who say, yes, the military should step in when democracy fails. Um, you, you talked when we were touching earlier about one party... Uh, democracies or one man leader democracies and Im immediately springing to mind is a country like Zimbabwe for instance our neighbor here in South Africa they've had uh, the rule of one party for a very long time Uganda for instance having been led by one man for well over 35 years um, I mean and, and and you've looked at some of the data coming out of those countries what do you find there about how they view democracy Interestingly, I think in some countries like Uganda, uh, where President Museveni has been in power since 1986, we also see that he supported for uh, limiting presidents to serving a maximum of two terms has held steady and is increasing. Mm. So although leaders you know, across uh, the continent often tell us that they are in power and they wanted to stay on because their people want them to do so, our data actually uh, says otherwise, that the Africans, many African citizens want leaders who only serve for a certain number of terms and then give way so that other people can come in and try to save to solve the problems that are before them, which is not again surprising because as I said, the people are, are dissatisfied and they want, I think, that regular leadership change and alternation so that they can try new ideas. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if Rwanda is on this list and I don't I don't see Rwanda. Uh, yeah. And the reason why I bring that up is because obviously they've just had their elections, a 99% win uh, for President Paul Kagame. I mean, it's, it's, it's eye popping, right? A president who wins an election by 99%. And what you've done, though, and of course, and I must know it, Rwanda's not in the study, but what you've done, though, was ask um, respondents if they believe that elections in their country are free. And fair. It's a debate that we've been having here in South Africa as well. Yes, indeed. And we actually find that the, the extent to which citizens uh, say that the, election, the previous elections were free and fair has a lot of, you know, bearing in terms of satisfaction with democracy. Mm. Uh, so South Africa is actually a very interesting case because it, it has recorded over a 10-year period the largest drop in satisfaction with democracy, a net drop of minus 35 percentage points in terms of satisfaction. And I think one of the uh, one of the drivers that we see is also government's ability to create jobs, but more importantly, perhaps of relevance for South Africa is government's ability to provide regular electricity. Mm. We find that you know irregular electricity tends for some reason to have a negative relationship with democratic satisfaction. And South Africa, given I think the recent experience with road shedding, uh, is 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 not surprising that a lot of people have lost confidence in democracy. Okay, what do you think this teaches us about, I suppose? Um, electoral and democratic awareness and education on the African continent. I mean, again, it stands out to me that you you mentioned that um, many Africans believing that the military should step in when they're unsatisfied with their democracy. What does that say about how the electorate on the continent views their democracy and certainly how well aware they are about it? 
As I, as I was saying, I think earlier on, actually Africans are, are the most understanding of democracy. This question on democracy and preference for democracy as well as this understanding is, is part of a module of questions that is asked in, in what is called the Global Parameters Service. And this includes uh, countries in other global regions. And Africans are among the, the largest in terms of offering an, an understanding and definition of democracy. But of course, when you look at the military, it just shows you the extent to which people are disillusioned with the performance of the democratic actors. They're not necessarily disillusioned with the democracy as a system of government, but rather disappointed with those who have been entrusted to run that democracy. So the issue with the military, I should again underline, is not, it's not that people want the military to come in. As I said, two thirds say, no, they don't want the military rule. But what they are saying is when democratic leaders are failing, uh, or are uh, ignoring the law and you know ignoring the constitutions, the military maybe as an institution should come in and clear that mess so that they can revert to democratic you know democratic uh, systems. Yeah. Of course, it, it's, it's a bit naive to think that the military can come in for a short period of time, clean up and go because experience tells us that when the military comes in, usually they want to stay for long. Yeah, that, that is that is uh, what experience has taught us. Um, but this is what uh, the views of the electorate is. 84% um, of them believing they're free to choose who to vote for. 80% saying they're free to join any political organization. 74% uh, saying they're free to say what they think, but only 49% of them saying their last elections were free and fair. That's Those are yeah. voters uh, from uh, 39 African countries speaking to us there. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Uh, Bonnie uh, Dulani of Afrobarometer, giving us that data.